Hey folks, I'm Colin Gray from thepodcasthost.com and today we're going to look at the best and the most popular microphones for podcasting in 2022. Let's take a look. So, microphones. This is what we're all here for, isn't it? I mean, this is one of the reasons I got into podcasting. It's for the shiny things, the gadgets. So let's look at a bunch of microphones. I want to go through... We've got a list of our own favorite ones and a few are just really popular ones in podcasting as well. And I'm gonna go through a whole bunch of them, okay? And that goes from all budgets too. So budget mics, we've got kind of intermediate level mics if you can upgrade that budget just a bit to upgrade that quality. And then into the pro level, which are pretty expensive, but worth taking a look at at least. Let's take a look at some budget microphones first. These are three budget mics that we tend to recommend as a great entry level in microphones. Now, the first one is one of my favorites, one of the podcast microphones that I've used the most and we have a bunch of, I think we've got like five or six in the podcast host office, and that's the Samson Q2U. Now, Samson are a great company, actually. Samson send us a bunch of things to review. They're really into podcasting. They're really supportive of the space, actually, creating a whole bunch of different things. And the Q2U, that's Q2U, Samson Q2U, is a mic that will suit just about anybody that comes into this space to wants to start podcasting for a bunch of different reasons. So what are those reasons? First of all, it's a handheld mic, so you can hold it just right in front of you. Or you can put it in a stand, just as if you're a singer or something like that. It's the same kind of uh, little clip, you know, you see singers pop their mic into when they're using their mic. So you can have either a table stand, it'll pop into that way, or you can have a boom mic stand as well, which the Samson can go into, no worries at all, and you can use as your standard mic. Now, it's connectors are the other interesting part. They are a USB mic, so you can plug it in just straight to your computer, keep things really simple. It's what I'd always recommend when you're first starting podcasting, just keep things really simple. USB mics are brilliant for that. Just don't have to worry about any of those kind of mixers or levels or any of that kind of caper. Just plugs right into your computer and works. But the really cool thing with the Q2U is that it also has an XLR connector too. Now XLR, if you haven't checked it out, go and search XLR on our website, thepodcasthost.com you'll see a guide to what XLR means. It's essentially like the pro kind of audio connectors. It's those little, well, the big thick things actually, thick connectors with three pins in them. It means you can plug it into a digital recorder, really good digital recorder, like a, you know the Zoom H5, the Zoom H6, or into a mixer, like the, the Rodecaster, super popular right now, the Rodecaster, or any other mixer, really. So, Essentially, what that means is the Q2U works perfectly as a beginner setup, just you, online calls, solo recording right into your computer. But equally, you can plug it into a mixer, a recorder, or anything as you kind of increase your level, as you get more complex setups, as you become a, you know, a pro down the road. <laughs> you never need to get to that level. So many podcasters are running amazing shows, like tens of thousands of downloads, hundreds of thousands with just a USB mic plugged into the computer, but the Q2U does give you that option if you want to upgrade in future. You want to run a recording with like four people around a table. You can plug it into an H6. Really flexible, great little mic. Now, another mic worth a quick mention. It's basically, it's a weird one because it's basically a, a, a duplicate of the Q2U, the ATR 2100. Mentioned a lot. Now, this is one that is, I read a, a breakdown a while back, um, a couple of years ago, where somebody broke down both mics and essentially they're exactly the same inside. So it's the same mic repurposed almost exactly for different manufacturers. And really it just depends on where you are, what the availability is. The Samsung Q2U tends to be available pretty widely these days, but I have seen uh, in the US particularly actually the ATR2100 being more available easier to get. So if you can get the ATR2100, then by all means that's a very good starter too. All the same features as the Q2U, from the, you know, the USB to the XLR, good quality, you know, an upgrade from any kind of internal mic, headset mic, that kind of stuff. Great quality mic. So the ATR2100, good substitute for the Q2U if you can't get the Q2U where you are. 
One budget mic that I love, a little bit different this time, not a big handheld desky mic, although you can take that handheld out, I suppose, but this is a lavalier mic for a slightly different context, which I'll go through. And this time around, it's from Rode. So Rode, Australian manufacturer, really into podcasting as well. You might know them from the Rode Caster, the Rode Pod, <laughs> their names are a bit crazy. It's kind of hard to tell the difference, but you've got the Rode Podcaster, which is their classic USB on the desk mic. I'll talk about that later in this video. You've got the Rode uh, Procaster, which is their XLR version. And then you've got the Rode SmartLav Plus, which is a lavalier mic. This lavalier mic, one that clips onto your shirt. So there's a few different reasons for using this. Why would you use a lavalier mic? Well, for video. You want it to be a little bit out of the way, potentially, for a video recording. Or if you're doing interviews in person, lavalier mics can work really nice for just having a, you know, a natural conversation because they're not intimidating. Like you get that Samsung Q2U, you've got it in your hand, this mic, you're like holding it up to people's faces. And it's just a bit intimidating. People can freeze up, they can sound a bit different. <laughs> people don't know, you know, if somebody's not been on a podcast very much, it can be hard for them to find their voice. But with a lavalier mic, you clip it to their shirt, you clip it to your own shirt, you've got a podcast mic on both people and then it comes across really natural and you can have just a normal natural conversation. Now the cool thing about these is the Rode Smart Lav Plus originally was designed to plug into a smartphone, Smart Lav. So it plugged right into your iPhone or your Samsung, whatever it is you have. The thing is, a lot of those phones have lost their you know, their uh, headphone connectors in favor of uh, something else, the lightning connector on the iPhone. So instead, these days, what you do is you get an adapter like this. So it's the Rode AI Micro and it plugs right in there. So if you still have a headphone slot on your phone, the Rode Smart Lav Plus can plug straight in there and record. Or if you want to record two people, which is brilliant. So you have one of these little adapters, you plug two mics in and then that means you can plug two mics into the one smartphone. What I love about this is great quality mic, definitely an upgrade from you know your standard kind of headset or whatever, but it's a kit that you can have in your bag anytime. You know, it can just, it takes up, it's a little tiny bag. You get these little leather bags from Rode and you can fit two smart labs and the adapter into that little leather bag. Have it in your, you know, your travel bag. So you've always got this interview kit with your smartphone ready for any occasion. So if you find somebody you want to interview, just grab them, sit them down on a couch, plug in the labs and start recording right on your smartphone. So I love that about the Rode Smart Lab. Great little mic, plugs into your phone, plugs into the adapter. Um, you do get, you can do it just solo as well. So you can plug just one of them into there and into your phone if you've got one of the more modern ones without a headphone adapter. If you're lucky, you've got an old one that's got a headphone adapter, you can plug it straight in there. So that's the Rode Smart Lab Plus quite relatively low budget as well. I would often have one of them and a handheld mic. If I know I'm gonna be recording, I'll have my handheld mic because the handheld mic's definitely a bit more high quality. Lav mics are a wee bit less directional, a wee bit lower quality. They're only tiny little things, but then you have the handheld too. But having that in your bag all the time, just great for opportunity recordings. Okay, let's look at the mid-range mics. So these are if you want to spend a little bit more, you've got a slightly higher budget, you wanna go up to the 100 to $200 range, just to increase that quality a wee bit more. Now, I wouldn't say that you have to do this. So that Samsung Q2U, that ATR2100, even the Rode Smart Lav Plus, all great mics at a budget level, low cost, get you into it, quality is great. These though, do add a bit of depth. So I tend to use one of these mics as my kind of standard day-to-day -day recording mic. That is the Rode Podcaster. That's the one I'll talk about first. So the Rode Podcaster as a podcasting mic. This is one of my favorites, okay? So the Rode Podcaster, it's the one that's sitting on my desk right over there, the one that I record on just day-to-day. -day. And ah, it's a great mic. It's 100 to $150, depending on when you catch it. Price jiggles up and down. But then you have to account for adding uh, boom arm as well. So you tend to buy boom arm, clips to the side of your desk, you can push it out of the way, bring it back in, and then a shock mount to add to that too. So by the time you add them, you're probably another $100 or so. So budget is creeping up here, but 
so much more depth you get there. So, I mean, you listen to this versus, say, one of the Samsung Q2U, the ATR 2100, there's not a huge amount of difference, but there's definitely that little resonance, that little kind of, or that little bit of oomph that you get from something just a little bit, the road just being a bit higher quality, higher quality components, just sounds a wee bit better. And again, I always talk about the fact, mics are very personal, actually. You'll find people who'll pick up the Q2U and they'll sound great. People pick up the road, the podcaster, and they don't like it as much. It just doesn't suit their voice. So it's one of those things where you have to test out with your own voice. But for me, the Rode Podcaster is one of my favorites. Now, the Rode Podcaster is a USB mic. Keeps it really simple. So it's high quality, really simple. Put it on your boom arm. Like I say, it's always available, always there, always just plugged into your computer, ready to record. It's just, it's just easy. And it's what I use all the time. So yeah, definitely I recommend on the Rode Podcaster. The Blue Yeti. So how's this as a podcasting mic? The Blue Yeti, undoubtedly one of the most popular mics in podcasting. Uh, we do our gear survey every year. We ask podcasters, what do you use as a mic? And undoubtedly, every single year, people say Blue Yeti, most popular. I mean, it's marketing. <laughs> they do good marketing. But the thing is, it is a decent mic as well. It's, it's a funny one because it's not the best mic. I think the Rode Podcaster's better quality, Samsung Q2U, probably arguably better quality in general. But the Blue Yeti, it's just, it's this standalone package. So it comes with a stand, arguably not a great stand because you end up hunched over the desk a little bit, a bit low, but it's there, it gets you started. The Blue Yeti also is sensitive to surrounding noise as well. It's a condenser mic, means it picks up a lot of the surrounds. Uh, it's a bit noisy if you're in a reflective room, if you're in a noisy room, that kind of stuff. But if you get up close to it, it can work for you. So get really close to that mic, get really kind of proximity effect in there, adds a bit of the bass, cuts down a bit of the, the background. Well, makes your voice louder so you can cut it down in uh, post-production. And the Blue Yeti can work for you. I mean, a lot of people use it. I wouldn't necessarily recommend it as a first choice, but like I say, you want that next upgrade up with an all-in-one package, comes with a stand, plugs straight into your computer, it's got a few different mic polar patterns. People like that about it. You can make it omnidirectional. You can make it unidirectional, all that kind of stuff. So you can put it in the middle of a table and record a group. But beware, <laughs> do that and you do need to get cozy. You all need to get close to that mic because otherwise you're getting a lot of the room noise, a lot of the background noise. So if you know how you're going to use it, you know that you want to get into the next level, but you want it at a kind of all-in-one price, then by all means, have a look at Blue Yeti. So another USB mic at the kind of middle level is the AKG Lyra. So AKG, more known for headphones potentially, but they make a couple of good mics as well. The Lyra being a really nice little one that's a, a, mainly a competitor to the Blue Yeti. It's a condenser too, comes with its own stand. It's got all the different uh, polar patterns that you can use just like the Yeti. So it's, I mean, AKG have blamely brought it out to try and capitalize on the, the Yeti's popularity. And to me, it sounds better, actually. It's uh, still condenser, still <clears throat> you know, sensitive to the room, so you still need to be careful how you use it. But really good mic. Plugs in, USB, simple, easy, plug it in, all in one package. No need for a stand or anything like that, unless you wanna make your posture a little bit better. But yeah, good recommend on the AKG Lyra. So here's a mic close to my heart. This is the MXL 990. Close to my heart because it was the first ever kind of proper mic that I bought. First condenser for sure. Uh, now this is an XLR mic, so you need a mixer, a sound interface, something like that to be able to plug it into your computer to record, uh, or just into a, a recorder, Zoom H6, something like that. But really good quality mic. I mean, I just remember being surprised. I'm, I bought this based on a few different reviews back in the day. It must have been like 2012, 2011. I, and I bought it based on that, pulled it out, plugged it all in, started recording, and I was just blown away by the increase in the quality, like what it brought out in my voice, what it brought out in our recordings, all that kind of stuff. Just loved it. It's a condenser, so it is sensitive to your room. You need somewhere relatively quiet, somewhere at least a little bit treated, 
But unlike other condensers that we've talked about in our main mic review, like the, the Yeti, the AKG Lyra, it doesn't actually pick up that much of the background. I found that it was much less sensitive to the room, much less sensitive to background um, than those mics. Unsure if that was just my imagination, but that was my experience with it. So I found that it was so good value because it was always only $79, $80. So it's kind of verging on budget level as opposed to mid. But I think we put it into mid because you do need a stand. You get a shock mount with it, but you do need a stand uh, and you do need some kind of recorder to plug it into. Like you need a, uh, like I said, an audio interface like the, you know, a Scarlett or a, the Rodecast or something like that. So it's definitely mid-level because it's a bit of a more complicated setup. But MXL 990, condenser mic, absolutely wonderful quality, good value on its own if you've got something to record into anyway. So yeah, MXL, good choice if you, uh, if you fancy that setup. Okay, here's a legendary mic for you for podcast recording. Not a traditional one for it, but let's take a look. This is the SM58 from Shure. Shure, legendary in the, uh, the audio industry. This is more commonly seen in the hands of a singer. You know, this is actually this, the mic that you'll find in a lot of massive stages. Uh, if people are still using the cable, of course. I think most people are going wireless these days, eh? But uh, SM58, this is indestructible, <laughs> this thing. I've seen videos of people running this mic over with a car uh, and it's still working. So it's a dynamic mic, so you get right up close to it. it. Basically cuts out all of the background noise. It's quite very low gain, actually, this mic. So you need to get right up close to it, like you would as a singer doesn't pick up the background, doesn't pick up the room. So this is an ideal mic if you're out and about a lot, if you're recording at events, recording in like co-working spaces, stuff like that, this is a really good mic. You can hand hold it. It's really well isolated too. You can't really hear the handling noise as you're holding it. Yes, the, the um, Samsung Q2U, our other kind of handheld recommendation can be a bit sensitive to that. You have to be kind of careful how you hold it, not move your hand around too much but this guy doesn't pick up any of that. So really good mic. So yeah, we use this for um, out and about recording events, all that kind of stuff with a Zoom H6 or a Zoom H5. And you can record two people. You can have one of these in each hand, or you can even do it like that, back and forth if you want to get some Vox Pops. Again, brilliant quality, sounds really deep, really rich. Um, ratified by the likes of, you know, Mick Jagger, not John, whoever who used this back in the day. Um, really good mic, yeah, if you want to use it. And you can put it on a stand too, so you can use it in your studio as your permanent mic if you want to as well. Okay, one mention for a mic, which is for those who have um, a good room, quiet, treated, uh, a good setup, as in a mixer, a good recorder, all XLR, and that's the Presonus PX1, okay, the Presonus PX1 because this falls into the mid-level budget, but gives an amazing sound. Okay, this thing just sounds great. It's large diaphragm, condenser, cardioid, microphone. So if you want that set up, and this is not for everyone, much more complicated. You have to set it up with mixer, recorder, all that kind of stuff. Uh, so that kind of pushes the budget, obviously. But if you have that stuff anyway, I pop this into the mid-level uh, range because the mic itself isn't that expensive, but gives you an amazing sound. It's a deep microphone, it's just so much resonance. And again, you always have to test it with your voice, make sure it works with your voice. But yeah, the Personas PX1, great little mic if you have the setup, the room, the environment to support it. Okay, time to look at the premium microphones. These are the mics that will cost you a small fortune, as much as a little car. But, uh, you know, arguably, the sound is a lot better. Now, if you've got to this stage, if you're interested in this part, you probably have a really good setup. You probably have been podcasting a while. I would not recommend jumping in here. If you're brand new to podcasting, don't spend $500 on a microphone uh, that needs XLR setup, mixers, all that kind of stuff. Just get yourself a good USB. But if you're here, you're probably geeky like me about mics and you want to hear about them. So let's have a look at some of the premium mics that we'd recommend.
one legend in the industry again from Shure. That audio company that comes up again and again is the Shure SM7B. So the SM7B is a big mic that comes on a stand. You've got to get your stand for it. You've got to get a mixer, a recorder, all XLR, but it's a big condenser mic that just has a big sound. Sounds amazing. It's just rich, deep, so much resonance. It's great. So it is though, as most condenser mics are, super sensitive to the background, super sensitive to the room. You need a good room for this. You need some good treatment and you need great mic technique. It'll pick up every little lip smack, every little pop, every little bit of sibilance, all that kind of stuff. So if you've got your room down, you've got your mic te technique down and you know you want something big and resonant, then Sure SM7B, good choice. So let's talk about the Samsung Q9U. Seven better than the Q2U? I'm not sure. I don't know if it's that much better. It's definitely better though. So this is an upgrade from the Q2U, the Samsung Q9U. It's much more along the lines of the SM7B or a Rode Podcaster. It goes on a stand. It's something that you'll put on your desk and you'll keep there. Now, Samsung continuing their trend to put in both XLR and USB in this one. <clears throat> makes it a great mic for upgrading, for buying initially. It's not super expensive. It's in the same kind of range as the Rode Podcaster, but a little bit more generally. So if you can upgrade just a tiny bit more, you get a USB mic that's great quality, that sounds amazing, sounds better than the Q2U, but not that much, but it definitely does sound better than the Q2U. Uh, but it will sit with you uh, if you upgrade and go through to recorders, to mixers, to multi-person recording, all that kind of stuff. So the Q9U is an interesting one, just a little bit more budget and you get a little bit more flexibility as well. The sound on it, as you can expect from something that's a bit bigger, a bit more chunky, really nice, really deep resonant, all that kind of stuff. And it comes with a couple of nice little features on the back as well. It's got a, a low cut, so you can turn that on to just do a little bit of, you know, cut out some of those pops, that kind of stuff. Um, and a few little features in there too, some nice little treats. So Samsung Q2, uh, Q9U, uh, they've built in a few different little things for you to benefit from Samsung being those uh, cheeky little good podcast uh, providers that they are. Okay, the Q9U, good recommendation on that if you can afford a slightly higher budget and you have the setup to support it as well. The Heil PR40 is a mic, one of the first that I heard about during my kind of early podcasting days. It was really popular among some of the big podcasting teachers back in the early, yeah, early to late 2000s. Um, it's a it's a mic that was in kind of vocals back in the day, voiceovers, audiobooks, that kind of stuff, and passed into podcasting. And it's because it does have a really good resonant sound to it. It's definitely high quality mic. It's an XLR, so you need the setup to support it. It's got the, uh, the boom arm, the, um, you've got to have the shock mount, all that kind of stuff. But it is a dynamic mic. So that's one of the great things about it. That was why it became popular back in the day as a podcasting mic, because it is one of these big mics that picks up a lot of your voice, all of that resonance, but much less of the background, much less of the room, because it's dynamic. It means you need to be decent with your mic technique, get right up close to it, stay there, keep on mic, but if you can do that, the Heil PR40 picked up all of the tones in your voice and none of the tones, well, little of the tones surrounding you too. So that was why it became popular back in the day. There's many other mics around nowadays that are similar. LPR40 still holds a bit of cachet though. Um, it's still a bit expensive, hard to get hold of here in the UK, but much easier in the US and elsewhere in the world as well. Um, but yeah, if you're looking for something, does need that setup, does need that XLR setup, the mixer, the recorder, whatever it is, you've got um, maybe a less ideal room, but you still want that big resonant mic, then the PR40 could be for you. One surprise that popped up in our gear survey two years ago, and has only increased since then as well, is the Rode NT1A. It surprised me actually because it hadn't really come across my radar. I hadn't heard much about it at all at that point. Even more surprising because we use a lot of Rode products here. Rode's a great company for podcasting, great quality stuff. 
but I hadn't found it. But we tried it out at that point when we found that and I can see why it's so popular. It's relatively low budget for this kind of high level range, maybe 200, 200 plus dollars and comes with a shock mount, a pop filter and a cable. So a really good little package. So you can see why people are buying it because they see this high level mic, hear about a great sound on it from reviews like this uh, and it comes with all that stuff and all they have to buy then is a recorder or an audio interface to be able to plug it into your computer. So it sounds great. Great quality, as you'd expect from Rode. Comes as that full package. Um, it's just, it's a really good choice actually in the end. So this has jumped straight in as one of our top recommendations at that higher level. And I mean, arguably it's almost in that mid-level budget at 200 something dollars. So if you're looking for something really good, not too much messing around with trying to find the full package, the Rode NT1, NT1, I always get that acronym mixed up, NT1A, the Rode NT1A is a great recommendation for you. Okay, here's a high level mic, a high budget mic that just has the most ridiculously loyal following. It's the Electro Voice RE20, the Electro Voice RE20. Now, Electro Voice, I don't know how they've done it. They've got, the marketing has just been successful in so many ways that people who like Electro Voice, like Electro Voice. <laughs> if you know an Electro Voice fan, an EV fan as they call them, uh, you'll know it because they'll bring them out. But the RE20, uh, undoubtedly, inarguably a great mic. Sounds amazing, it's, it's rich tones, it's resonant. I think I've said that about a few mics in this overall review so far, but the, there's something just so memorable about the tone that comes out of an Electro voice, just as much as it's kind of undefinable as well. They're, they're crazy mics and they are crazy expensive, so you will pay for them. Um, do you know, uh, Matthew did uh, its Sexiest Mic Roundup as well on our site. Have a search for uh, Sexy Mics, if you can bear to do that, on thepodcasthost.com. The Electro Voice is a sexy mic, it looks good. But some mics are just, you know, plain black things, they're just pretty utilitarian, but the Electro Voice, along with a few others, they look good. They're a good thing to have on your desk, on a video even. So. If you're looking for something, you're happy to splurge, spend all the money for something that is just amazing sounding. Um, arguably worth it, but you need all this stuff around it, the mix of the recorder, the cables, the shock mount, all of that stuff. Um, and then you need to know how to use all those bits, uh, not just plug it in via USB. Then that RE20, that Electro Voice RE20 could be for you if you really just want the best of the best. So there you have it, our top mics and some of our most popular mics for 2022. If you're a podcaster, I hope you've found something in there to help either start your podcasting journey, keep it simple, keep it simple, just USB, or continue your podcasting journey. Like once you're six months a year in, that's when you can justify that kind of upgrade. Start worrying more about the gear, about upgrading that audio quality and spending a little bit more on some uh, nice shiny gadgets to uh, improve your podcast. And I mean, it won't improve your podcast. Remember, it's all about the content, but there's no doubt that having a nice shiny mic that does sound, brings the best out of your voice. Well, that's something about it. There is, uh, there is some worth there for sure. So please do check out the description below for all of the full reviews. You'll find a full review for nearly all of the mics that I've mentioned in this full video, and you'll find at least written comments in our main best mics article. Look in the description below for the links to all of them. And please do subscribe to the channel to get updates on all of the future videos we put out. The final ask, final ask, comment. Please do tell us if we've missed any mics, what do you use? What mic do you use for your podcast? Um, if it's any of the ones I've mentioned, I'd love to hear your thoughts on that mic. And if I haven't mentioned it here, which I undoubtedly have, because there's tons of mics out there, millions of mics out there, so there's probably something you're using that is not listed in this video, then pop it in below and we'll uh, maybe take a look at it on the site in future. All right, thanks, happy podcasting, and I'll see you later. Did that record? Let's hope so. <laughs> I thought the video was okay.